Wir wollen gemeinsam beten. Vater, wir erheben dich in unserem Lobpreis heute Abend. Du bist hoch erhoben auf dem Thron. Herr, du bist nicht nur in unserer Mitte, sondern wir glauben, dass du auch in der Mitte von all denen bist, die sich in deinem Namen versammeln heute Abend. Herr, increase our vision tonight. Herr, gib uns einen größeren Weitblick. Herr, wenn wir nicht diese Vision haben, dann ist das Ganze nur eine mühselige Arbeit. Herr, dann wird es nur ein geistliches Wegfeuer sein, wo wir uns äh, mühen, wenn du nicht deinen Geist, dein Feuer in unsere Herzen bringst. Herr, und danke, dass du uns hierher gebracht hast, zu diesem besonderen Abend. And we just worship you together. Und wir beten dich heute Abend an. In Jesus name. Im Namen Amen. Jesu. Amen. How many are praising the Lord in your heart? Honestly, right now, in the last moments, even before you came into the tent, You are praising the Lord in your heart. Wie viele von euch haben den Herrn in ihrem Herzen gepriesen, sogar vor der Veranstaltung? Okay, Einige wissen noch nicht, was das bedeutet. And of course, when I was away, they took advantage and made many wonderful changes. Und als ich weg war, haben sie natürlich darauf Nutzen gezogen, haben viele verändert. Even brought television in. Sie haben sogar das Fernsehen reingebracht. But praise God for change. Things change and works grow. Aber preis dem Herrn für Veränderungen. But there are some things that have not changed. Aber es gibt einige Dinge, die haben sich nicht geändert. The primary burden of India has not changed. Unsere große Last für das, das Land Indien hat sich noch nicht geändert. And if you don't have a vision for India, you're of course in the wrong fellowship. Und wenn du keine Last für Indien hast, dann bist du schon in der falschen Bewegung. But we'll give you several days mercy for you to get the vision. Doesn't mean you all have to go to India. We don't want some of you in India. But it means we all pray for India. And Pakistan. And Bangladesh. All part of one area of the world, sometimes called the subcontinent. And there are one billion souls in that part of the world. One thousand million people in that one subcontinent. It took until 1830 to get that many people in the whole world. Now there are 4.7 billion or 4.700 million people in the whole world. So just in India, we have as many people tonight as lived in the entire world when your great, 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 great grandfather was rowing his boat down the Thames. <laughs> haben wir mehr Leute oder genauso viele Leute allein in Indien wie damals als sein Urgroßvater sein Ruderboot in Rhein hinunter gerudert hat. <lacht> And we hope that many of you will decide to uh, pray for India during this time. Und wir hoffen, dass viele von euch sich entschließen werden während dieser Tage und in der Zukunft für Indien zu beten. Now I've seen a lot of giveaway programs in OM over the years. Während der letzten Jahre habe ich viele Programme miterlebt, wo man Dinge kostenlos weggegeben hat. But I don't think I've seen one as important as this. Aber ich glaube, ich habe nicht ein solch wichtiges Programm wie dieses. If you commit yourself to pray for India, even one minute a day, you can get this beautiful map as a free gift and a reminder to pray for this giant subcontinent. Wenn du dich entschließt, jeden Tag für Indien zu beten, selbst wenn es nur eine Minute ist, dann kannst du diese schöne Karte von diesem riesen Subkontinent bekommen. Now, for those of us involved in Pakistan, we find a little bit of difficulty with this map. Solche von uns, die auch in Pakistan arbeiten, haben etwas Schwierigkeiten mit dieser Landkarte. We only, I think, have one Pakistani here. Wir haben, glaube ich, nur einen 
Ashley, please stand up. He's official representative of Pakistan. And um, he's not on OM yet. He's just visiting, checking us out. But um, he'll be giving his testimony. Here come the books. Thank you. This is Mark. He's also a subcontinent extreme case. I mean, uh, life case or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Ashley, I think you ought to come up and give your testimony because I don't get so many nights. Please come up. <laughs> That's okay. But we hope you will get one of these maps and pray for the subcontinent. Ashley and I we were traveling together in England and he shared his testimony in some of the meetings of how he came to Christ through a particular ministry of OM. Maybe you could just share that briefly now and I'll look in the book bag and see what we got. Don't take more than an hour. <laughs> Well, initially, people were asking me why I'm here in England, and uh, I've been around uh, traveling with George and Mark, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of common sense to know that they're both Americans, and uh, trying to learn the English culture. The reason why I'm in England is not just that I'm here, so you can uh, understand what a cultural hodgepodge I am right now. But the reason I'm here is that, that in 1978 in December, uh, the MV, the ship MV Lagos sailed into Karachi. Das in December 1978 the Lagos nach Karachi fuhr. And before the ship came in, there was a man that comes before the ship. Some. Und, uh, der Vorbereitungsmann kam vorher schon. He's called. Karachi. He's called the lineup man. Man nennt ihn eben den lineup and his, man. And his name was Stan Thompson. Dieser Bruder heißt Stan Thompson. And he shared with me uh, the message uh, of God's Word and uh, continually had Bible studies with me. And so when the ship sailed in December the 27th, uh, just before the, uh, the 27th, in fact it was the 22nd, and as the ship then on the 22nd December to Karachi came, actually it was the 27th when I committed my life, and I'm not really prepared for this, this evening, to give my testimony, but anyway. Uh, on that ship, in one of the little rooms, I prayed to receive Christ. And soon after that, uh, we started what is called the Logos Fellowship, because we actually met on the Logos ship, a bunch of us. Und kurze Zeit danach haben wir die Logos Gemeinschaft oder die Logos Gruppe gegründet. Wir haben uns nämlich noch auf dem Schiff getroffen. And since March 1979 to this very day, uh, the Logos has been meet, the Logos Fellowship has been meeting in Karachi. Und seit März 1979 bis heute hat sich die Logos Gruppe in der Stadt Karachi regelmäßig getroffen. But I wouldn't have been standing here in front of you if a little ship uh, didn't decide to sail into Karachi and one man take a little interest and uh, share with me. I know God is sovereign and he can use other ways, but uh, this was the way he used it with me. Okay, my hour is over. <laughs> just, just give us a prayer request. We know this Lagos Fellowship grew from just a few. How many are fellowshipping and coming regularly now? Right. 
We started off uh, somewhere around about 13. I think the last count was about 40 plus. We have with about 13 people started and now we are over 40. Churches, how, how, how do they get on together? Don't they have a lot of fights and things? To come to? <laughs> All different churches. Well, uh, the chief uh, object is not to get together to see who's stronger, but uh, to get together to see how we can reach Karachi, that city which is reaching uh, now nine million people, uh, with very little work to that majority, uh, 96 percent Muslim. And uh, that is one of our chief uh, priorities and goals. And Ken? Since the days the ship was there, OM has had teens, young people like this. I mean, with all the tremendous... Pakistani Christians like yourself, what, what do we need these foreigners for? Do you think we should challenge any of these people to go or, or challenge them to stay away? This, this, is, your, this is your chance. <laughs> yes. Okay. There, are, there is one province uh, in Pakistan known as Balochistan. Eine Provinz or a Bundesland in Pakistan called Baluchistan. Up to now there are towns and places over there that have never, people over there have never heard of Jesus Christ. And there are cities and cities where people have never heard of Jesus Christ. And if they have heard of him, it's a very distorted version. And when they have heard of they have heard of him, it's a very distorted version. And when they have heard of him, it's a very distorted version. And when you think of a handful of people and perhaps five OMers among the men's team in Karachi, or another five uh, women uh, ladies team, how are nine million people going to be reached with a growth rate of 2.2%? Just let me say a little bit before, George was talking about India. Uh, before the Sikh crisis, people with Commonwealth passports could go in any time. Before the crisis with the Sikhs in India, people who had Commonwealth passports could go into India without visa problems. Now, Pakistan is the unique country in that whole area where Commonwealth people with Commonwealth passports can go in anytime, stay as long as they want, do whatever they want, well, uh, share the gospel. <laughs> and please, may I appeal with you, those who have Commonwealth passports, to be very, to be praying seriously about what God would have you do on a one-year or a two-year program. If you don't have a Commonwealth passport, you don't need to worry. <laughs> because OM has an eastward-bound program, and you can stay six months in Pakistan, six months in India, six months in Nepal, join OM, see the world. I sign up. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. We hope you'll take the opportunity to meet Ashley, to meet Gary Dean representing India, to meet Frankie, um, just married, fresh back from Singapore, about Pakistan. Is it Frankie? Frank. Frank. Where's Frank? There in the back, the good-looking man holding the tent up. Yes. <laughs> And, of course, Nigel has already announced all the tremendous uh, seminars that you can get involved in and find out more information. You can naturally Ashley and Frank and other people and also the different seminars and besuchen, die schon von angekündigt wurden. Today is a very special day for, um, for my uh, family. Heute ist ein ganz besonderer Tag für meine Familie. I was just using my little orange card. You got these... Miracle cards, just push it in the phone 
and you can talk all over the world once you, once you get one. Ich habe gerade diese uh, Orangen gerade benutzt und habe sie in das Telefon gesteckt und man kann überall hin telefonieren. We didn't have these back in the early days of OM. In den ersten uh, Anfangs we used to just get on our knees weeping before the leader for permission to make one long distance call to our sick grandmother. And I wanted to call my daughter because today is her 21st birthday and if you're from England you know what a 21st birthday is supposed to be about. Und äh, ich habe meine Tochter angerufen, denn heute ist der 21. Geburtstag und wer aus England ist, der weiß, wie wichtig dieses Datum ist. Of course, we partially celebrated it together last night. Wir haben gestern Abend schon etwas gemeinsam gefeiert. And we won't tell you how much that cost. Wir werden ja nicht, da werden noch nicht verraten, wie viel das gekostet hat. But thank God for the 21 years that he's given to her. She was born in Lancashire, England, right? The same place the ship vision was born. For those of you who are new, there is significant difference between the birth of a ship ministry and the birth of a daughter. Just <laughs> But the crisis over 21 years of both ministries have been somewhat similar. We'll not make the comparisons now. It's hard to believe that in about three months we'll be celebrating the 25th anniversary of the birth of this work here in Europe. There wasn't much. Uh, there wasn't much existing before it was born in Europe. So that's a very significant event in OM's history. In fact, when the, the work was born in Europe, there were only a few full-time Mexicans and other part-time people, and mainly students in the whole world. That's all it was when my wife and I came to Spain in 1960. And if someone told me that 25 years later I'd be still doing the same thing every single summer and seeing God work in a similar way, I'm not sure I could have believed it possible. Even, even more miraculous is that I sense an excitement in my own heart about this summer campaign even as it was 20 some years ago. Now, we always used to have two messages and two different speakers in the evening meetings. A few felt this was too long. So now we don't have two uh, messages, two speakers. But instead, I'm going to give you two messages. The first one is just a little exhortation about this conference that I really believe can help you make it through the next few days. I spent about one-fourth of my life in conferences since becoming a Christian. I just come from a Christian rock concert in Chicago. 5,000 rock and rollers for Jesus. It was as wild as 25 years of OM all put together. I had to speak the final message after about 10 bands on the Saturday night, last Saturday. It was out, of course, in a huge open amphitheater. 
And they had just had Larry Norman. Larry Norman had And Res Band. On the Res Band. And E.T. No, he wasn't there. Um, Steve Taylor. Steve Taylor. How many know Steve Taylor? And he was really, he had just sang a protest song against the prosperity movement, and the place was electric. For a little skinny character like me to follow Steve Taylor and give a message is not a simple task. Even when you're drunk on new wine. And I was standing backstage. Everybody was clapping. They wanted an encore. They wanted another message from Steve Taylor. And I thought, boy, I wonder when I'm going to speak. And in moved the sheriff. The local sheriff moved in. The sheriff, the police department. And apparently they weren't allowed any uh, loud music after a certain time. Within one minute, Steve Taylor and the band were swept off the platform. The next minute, there I was uh, standing in front of this huge audience. You know, about 100 to 200 people made commitments of their lives to Jesus Christ in that meeting. And God mightily blessed that uh, very unusual, rather loud con uh, conference. I never cease to be amazed at the, the wide range of ways that God is working in the world today. Despite a high number of narrow-minded Christians, God is on the loose, breaking things up all over the place. Praise God for what He's doing in many, many different fellowships all over the world right now. Throughout this week, we want to be praying for Youth with a Mission. We want to be praying for Campus Crusade. Uh, no, Youth with a Mission. Youth for Christ as well. And we want to be praying for the Greater Europe Mission that runs this Bible school. We want to pray for child evangelism. We want to pray for UCCF, for IFES. And we hope in the prayer times that you will pray for different mission groups uh, that you've been involved with, the Navigators and so many great fellowships and your local church above all else. If I thought this was all that God was doing this summer, I think I would become as depressed as an elephant playing chess with a rabbit. Or at least as frustrated. How can you get the most out of this conference? Because this is the purpose. It is not to get you to come into our little program, our little vision. That is not the first burden. The first burden on our hearts is your spiritual health and well-being. And we know there are ways that you can get more out of this conference. Number one, make God your goal. You write it down. We're not here to get little, uh, you know, little, little challenges that we forget ten minutes later 
but to get stuff down and to learn it. Wir wollen nicht irgendwas hinausschleudern und ihr vergesst es 10 Minuten später, sondern schreibt euch auf und lernt es. Why do we push so much the writings of A.W. Tozer? Warum uh, schlagen wir immer wieder die Bücher von A. Tozer vor? Because he emphasizes knowing God. Weil er immer wieder dieses Thema Gott erkennen betont. One of the best Christian books that has ever been put into print. The best of A.W. Tozer. Eines der besten Bücher auf dem Christen Gebiet sind die besten Uh, If I had to choose a year of Bible college or this book, it would be a very difficult decision. No man in our generation, he's with Jesus now, had a sharper, sharper more prophetic cutting edge for truth and reality than this man A.W. Tozer. I really believe that glaube, with all my heart. His emphasis was knowing God. He realized God would allow a lot of things to go wrong in your life and in your little program to get you to really know God intimately and personally in the depth of your soul. We all know Matthew. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6.33. Number two, have a spirit. This is, this is absolutely essential, especially for me. A spirit of expectation. I, I've, I've been battling all day. I found today a bit difficult. Oh, another conference. Oh, wieder eine Konferenz. I don't mind the conference. Ich mach mir nichts. But I also have about 75 people I need to personally see Aber in the next four days. Which is impossible. So that's always encouraging. Das ist immer ermutigend. And I found it a hard day. Und ich habe es ein, als einen schweren Tag empfunden. In fact, I'll let you in on a little secret. I don't like conferences. I, I like one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I like to go. I like to take one of you, you know, and just go for a walk for a day or two. <laughs> I won't. I won't do that. It'd scare you right out of your shoes. And, and I'm not here because I have a, per a personal infatuation with OM lifestyle and OM conferences. That's not why I'm here. Maybe you're here that way. And, uh, of course, when you're new to this kind of thing, you may like it. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Don't think you're weird because you like spiritual things. That's a good sign. Some of us aren't that spiritual, but that's a good sign. But whatever, you need to take a position of faith and believe God for great things during these few days One great missionary said we've got to expect great things from God. I think it was William Carey, wasn't it? You just studied all that. You should know that. I hope you'll do that. You will get as much from this summer as you really want with all of your soul and, and faith and expectation. Number three, 
try by God's grace to keep a right attitude. Versuche durch die Gnade Gottes eine richtige Einstellung, Haltung zu bewahren. Tozer warns us of the sin of cynicism. It's a growing disease, especially among the middle age characters like Tozer me. Tozer hat uns gewarnt vor der Sünde des der Zynik. Es ist vor allem eine Sünde, die äh, im gehobenen Alter oft When you see hypocrisy or inconsistency, you see people do selfish things. You see the failures of your brothers or your sisters or your leader. It's easy to become cynical. Cynicism uh, often leads to bitterness. And cynicism and bitterness is destroying more, more people than I think uh, things like immorality are. Keeping a right attitude toward one another. That person that doesn't seem to accept you. That, that person who maybe fails uh, to say hello to you when you say hello to him. God is concerned about our attitudes. Not, not just the outward things we do, but he's concerned about our attitudes. Number four, don't miss that time with God, that personal time. Number five, beware of spiritual indigestion. You're not going to digest all the food that we give you. Here's a little... A little recommendation I wish I knew many years ago. When you're in a strong spiritual movement like OM, hearing a lot of strong messages, take what you can and leave the rest for another day. And don't judge, don't go around setting yourself up as a judge of other people's spirituality. The growth of Pharisee, Phariseeism is almost out of control in the church. We don't need any more of it this week. God is working in different people in different ways. And we don't want to just go around uh, judging or, or getting into judgmentalism. Number six, don't presume. Don't just presume that all is going to go well. Now we know Satan is going to attack your team when you leave here. But he will try to attack some before we leave. So, so don't presume and leave your spiritual armor back in the dormitory in the morning. Number seven, remember faithfulness in little things. You know, safety is one of the biggest factors we face in our work this summer. Safety. Some of you are praying for my good friend Don Maxwell. He was unloading books from the top of our motorhome there in the States, the motorhome of a friend of mine. It's like a bus, very high. And his hand hit that string that holds the lid back and pulled the string, the, the lid back on his head. 
He fell 10 feet on his head. Only the mercy of God that he is not totally paralyzed or dead. And he has fractured his uh, sixth vertebrae. And for two months he'll be in a special cast ring that holds his head completely in one position so that can heal. Pray for Don. And that, that was a reminder to me in the beginning of the summer that safety is one of the biggest things we face when we've got about 3,000 young people and 400 vehicles and a couple of ships moving throughout almost the entire world. Do you remember Easter in Germany when in the kitchen uh, they spilled a giant vat of boiling water on that brother's feet? Any, any of you were there at that time? I visited him in the hospital. Believe me, it wasn't funny. So let's not, let's be concerned with details. Let's think safety, vehicles, buildings, fire, and many other areas. Let's think safety and be concerned about details. God has been very merciful in regard to accidents in the past month or two uh, in OM. Let's commit this to God. Let's be praying, especially for those that have the important responsibility of driving these vehicles. And then, I forgot which number we're at. Is it number eight? Let's learn a little bit about submission. You study Hebrews 13, 17 or 1 Thessalonians 5, 12. OM is not into submissionism, I can assure you. We lead by negotiation. But at the same time, there must be compassionate cooperation if we're going to get a specific job of evangelism or church planting done this summer. My daughter was telling me about a church where she was involved just yesterday. They spent an hour or two hours in a massive debate about one sign to put up. Have you ever learned it's hard to get Christians to agree on things? We believe in biblical leadership. I sort of like the Anglican church in some ways. I've been listening to Philip Hacking, the chairman of the Keswick Convention, the last day or two on tape. Oh, he spoke very strong that the Church of Jesus Christ is not a democracy. I can assure you, OM is not a democracy. We're not going to elect, you're not going to have a big election who's going to be your team leader. We, after prayer and discussion and negotiation and training, are going to ask someone to be your team leader. And for some of you, it's going to be exactly opposite to the kind of team leader you were dreaming about when you had that last nightmare. 
der Zielgerade, den ihr haben will, genau das Gegenteil von dem sein, das ihr euch eigentlich vorstellt. God has a special program for you. Gott hat ein ganz besonderes Spezialprogramm für euch. He knows how to overrule even the mistakes of OM and we make plenty of them, I can assure you. Er kann sogar die ganzen Fehler von OM wirklich so in die Hand nehmen, dass er noch was Gutes macht. Maybe that's how some of you got here, we misread your application. Wir machen viele Fehler, vielleicht sind einige von euch sogar dadurch hierher gekommen. Wir haben vielleicht eure Anmeldung von uns. But we are not going to send you home, we're believing God to overrule. Wir werden euch jetzt nicht nach Hause senden, sondern wir glauben, dass Gott die Sache in die Hand nehmen kann. One of our favorite verses is Romans 8, 28. Memorize it as quickly as possible and write it on your hand or something. Romans 8, 28. Römer 8, 28. There are some other things we need during this conference if we're going to get the most out of it. Patience. Unselfishness. Uh, a um, little bit of organization and learning how to organize. Unterordnet, wie man sich um, nothing more important than love. Und es gibt nichts Wichtigeres darüber hinaus als Liebe. Without love we are sounding brass and tingling cymbal. Ohne Liebe sind wir nur wie eine klingende Schelle. And for me that means uh, considerable repentance. Und das bedeutet für mich auch wieder, dass ich Buße tun muss. After all I wrote the book Revolution of Love. Denn ich hatte auch das Buch geschrieben, eine Revolution der Liebe und Aufgewiesenheit. Uh, that must have been almost 21, 22 years ago. Das ist vielleicht schon 20, 21 Jahre her. I'm still learning. Und ich lerne immer noch. I thank God for his patience with me. Danke, dank sei Gott, dass er mit mir geduldig ist. I'm amazed that he continues to, to work through me in, in any way at all. Ich bin immer wieder erstaunt, dass er weiterhin durch mich arbeitet. And perhaps that's the biggest word Two biggest words I'd love to write on, on the tent, so you can all see it as you come into the tent each night. Mercy and grace. I hope they're key words in your vocabulary. OM can become very legalistic if we're not careful. We have a lot of goals. We believe the Word of God. We have so much that we want to accomplish. And without mercy and grace, it can become legalistic. And when it becomes legalistic, it becomes ugly. When it come, becomes ugly, instead of people getting ministered to, they get hurt. Und wenn es heftig wird, dann werden mit Leuten nicht gedient, sondern sie werden verletzt. May grace abound in our midst, in our hearts, in everything that we do. Wir beten, dass Gnade und Barmherzigkeit in Fülle da ist. And in our attitude toward ourselves. Und auch in unserer Einstellung uns selbst gegenüber. Because in all conferences, people get very down on themselves sometimes. Denn sehr oft kommt es vor, dass in allen Konferenzen Leute sehr... Uh, They become overly conscious of their sins and of their failures as they hear some of the messages. And the devil is a liar. He's an accuser of the brethren, the Bible says. And he's going to accuse you. He's going to say you, you're no good. He's going to tell you, you're never going to make it through this. Even one month. What, your program? Forget it. You're not going to make it even through the conference. You're going to drown in the pond. He is the accuser of the brethren. I've just been working on a message on this. Seven, eight ways that Satan tries to get us to believe lies about ourselves. I'm no good. I'm a failure. Nobody loves me. My mother doesn't love me. My dog doesn't love me. God will never use me. He doesn't hear my prayers. And on and on it goes. And I pray that you'll 
put on the, sh the, 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 the shield of faith and stop those fiery darts of Satan to get you to believe lies about yourself. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's just stand up for a minute. Let's just pray two by two and ask God to move in mighty power on this conference. Just pray two by two across the tent till I say amen. God hasn't brought us all here for the same reason. We believe God is working in different people in different ways. But there are some things that God wants to do in all of us. He wants to give all of us more love. Who, who among you would argue against that? Yet no doctrine has been paid greater lip service than the doctrine of 1 Corinthians 13. I pray you may never forget that. And God wants to give us greater vision. The OM policies, the OM principles that we're sharing with you, without vision, they are drudgery, they are agony, it's not worth it, it's better to go home at the end of the week. Ohne ein Weiblich, eine Vision, eine große Mühsal, eine, eine Agonie und Bitte, wäre es nach Hause zu gehen. Faith without love is dead and missions without vision is indeed dead. Glaube ohne Liebe ist tot und Mission ohne Vision, ohne ein Weiblich ist ebenfalls tot. I don't think you'll ever understand what we've been doing for the last 25 years or more. Ich glaube nicht, dass ihr jemals wirklich verstehen würdet, If you don't understand or realize that many of us are, are just possessed, we're possessed with a great vision of God and what God wants to do among His people in the kingdom in the world today. When the work was first born in Europe, many laughed, many criticized. Als die Arbeit vor 25 Jahren in Europa entstand, haben viele gelacht und viele uns kritisiert. And most people said George Verwer, of course, is just a load of youthful zeal. I mean, when he's older and he grows up, he will realize this is youthful zeal. Das ist einfach nur so ein jugendlicher, begeisterter Mensch. That's why I am so excited about these middle years. These are the great years. Aber darum bin ich so begeistert über diese... Just the joy of nobody ever writing me any longer and saying, you know, the youthful zeal trip. Nobody's talking to me about this anymore. My daughter, of course, called me a wrinkly old man. I mean, that's a bit extreme on the other side. But you see, this zeal that some of us have had every day since we were converted to Christ is not from man, it is from God. It's not the same in everybody. It doesn't mean you lovely little English girls are going to become big, loud mouth uh, Americans like me. And to me, for 25 years, we've learned the wonderful combination of the Americans and the British with just a few French and Germans uh, surrounding them. It's a tremendous combination for God. Especially when the Swedes are holding, holding the rule book. And I am as convinced of, of working as international teams, even though humanly it's impossible, I'm as convinced of it as I have ever been. And you know, some even unconverted people think that this kind of program is a tremendous thing. 
In fact, we have some unconverted people more excited about what OM is doing than some of the converted people. <coughs> And I believe God wants to increase our vision. That's why we've got these maps. That's why we're going to give you this free India map. We don't expect everybody to go there, but we want your vision to grow and to be practical. For the glory of God. Darum geben wir euch diese Karten von Indien. Wir wollen nicht, dass ihr alle dahin geht, aber dass ihr eine Last für Indien bekommt und wachst in dieser Vision. This is a very important passage of Scripture. Diese, dieser Abschnitt in Römer 10 ist sehr, sehr wichtig. Because it talks about the importance of sending. Denn es handelt hier, es redet hier von dem, uh, der Wichtigkeit der Sendung. I've been preaching about that a lot in many of our churches. Ich habe in vielen Kirchen darüber geredet. Because unless we have more sending churches, many of you who want to go, you'll never go. World evangelism is a priority task. It should be the priority task of every local church that is obedient to Scripture. And one of the main strategies of Satan in the church is to get the church to major on minors and to overemphasize good things and to miss the best thing that Jesus Christ gave us to do. After all, it was Jesus Christ who told us in Matthew 9, the last few verses, jot down the reference, to pray the Lord of the harvest to send forth labors. I think most of you have read my book, No Turning Back. You know the testimony or you've read the history of the work. One lady prayed and that's how OM came into being. Why? How? She had a vision. She's 80 plus years of age. I just talked to her on the phone again. She's just going in for another operation. She has operations like some of you just, you know, go for a walk. I mean, she's just going to get another operation. And the ministry of intercessory prayer she has from that old folks home is just touching almost every nation in the world for Christ. One unknown dear woman of prayer. I want to ask you, do you have a vision? Do you know where you're going in your life? Do you, do you have something that you're living for that pounds in your heart that, that you dream at at night and that you think about in the daytime? Some unreached people's group, some nation of the world. Or maybe as in my case, the whole world. I know sometimes when you really get burst With vision, it's just, it's overwhelming. And we'll talk more about that. Because we'll, you'll find us emphasizing a lot this thing of, of finding balance in all things. So God has brought us here to increase our vision. God has brought us here to teach us more about love. I've had the joy of seeing several thousand people in the last year in the meetings filled with the Holy Spirit. And I mention this because it's so important. Ephesians 5. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's God's will for every believer. It doesn't work out the same in every believer. And we're going to talk later on this week about being filled with the Holy Spirit. You study Acts 1.8. 
And you'll see that reaching the unreached people and the work of the Holy Spirit is inseparable. It's inseparable. The Holy Spirit causes us to be His witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth. How shall they hear unless they be sent? How shall they hear unless there be a witness, unless there be a preacher? And I feel very strongly God has brought some of you here. Many of you here because you are destined in His purposes to go. Not just to send, but to go. Und ich bin fest davon überzeugt, dass Gott viele von euch hierher gebracht hat, dass ihr hinausgeht, dass ihr bestimmt dazu seid, hinauszugehen. Ich werde heute Abend keinen gefühlsvollen Aufruf machen, hinauszugehen. But I want you to think about this. Aber ich möchte, dass ihr darüber nachdenkt. I want you to think about these few reasons why I believe you, those of you in this tent right now, should pray about going at least for a couple of years to the unreached. Ich möchte, dass ihr wirklich darüber nachdenkt und betet, warum gerade ihr hier in diesem Zelt heute Abend beten sollt, ob ihr wenigstens zwei Jahre zu den Unerreichten seid. Or to go behind the scenes in a movement like OM or some other movement that has as its goal the reaching of the unreached people with a message in the word of Jesus Christ. Oder dass ihr in eine Bewegung wie zum Beispiel OM kommt, um hinter den Kulissen mitzuarbeiten, weil das Ziel dieser Bewegung eben das ist, unerreichte Menschen mit dem Evangelium von Jesus zu You are, I believe, very special people. How many of you believe you've experienced a bit of a miracle, a, a great answer to prayer ever to be in this tent at this time? Raise your hand. Okay. Those who didn't raise your hand, how many of you experienced a mini miracle? to get here. Well, that covers a lot of people. It's not easy to come on OM. Many have not come because they couldn't see the money come in. Many have been refused by their churches, by their parents, many. For every one of you that comes, we are in contact with between five and ten people And then sometimes people wonder what our office staff is doing in their spare time. There are 10 to 15 different reasons why people who wanted to come have not been able to come this summer. 10 to 15 different reasons. So you, I believe, are very special people. Therefore, you must take a further step. You must consider these reasons why you should be involved for a few years or a lifetime in actually going. The Word of God, of course, commands it in a general way. But I want to target in on you. Number one, because the, gre the, the need is so overwhelming and so great. Nations where the church does not exist. If I took time to give you statistics, it, it would overwhelm you. I think you'll be getting them throughout the week, so I'm not going to say anything else. Time is late. Ich würde uh, euch wahrscheinlich überwältigen mit Statistiken, wenn ich jetzt anfange damit, aber während der Woche bekommt ihr noch Young people, if 30 or 40 percent of the people on this planet have not yet heard or read the gospel, then we need to make that a priority in our thinking and in our praying. Aber wenn 30 oder 40 Prozent der ganzen Weltbevölkerung noch nichts von Jesus gehört haben, dann müssen wir das zu unserer Priorität machen, 
If thousands of unreached people's groups have no indigenous and no real church, then we must make that a priority in our thinking if we say, dare to say we believe the Bible is God's word. Number two, because very few are going. Let's not be deceived when we're, you know, here and we meet others who are going. This is a completely unusual situation. In general, missions today is having difficulty keeping up with the birth, uh, the death rate of the missionaries and the retirement rate. Praise God, this is partially compensated by an increase of, of third world missionaries and nationals moving for God in their own country, which is also a vital part of our own work. But still in places like America and England and Sweden and Norway and Germany, 98% of our effort and our money and our manpower, 98% is to our own country and to our own situations and our own stained glass windows and our own homes and churches and all the rest. Aber wir müssen doch zugeben, dass in Deutschland, in Amerika, in vielen anderen westlichen Ländern die ganzen Gelder der Kirche für vielleicht 98% immer noch in unsere eigenen Taschenbücher, unser eigenes Land, für unsere eigenen Kirchenfenster und Orgel und, und so weiter. And that's why some of you, if you return home with a mission vision and you desire to serve Christ in Pakistan and India, people will look at you as some kind of a weirdo, some kind of extremist that want to take your pulse. Und äh, wenn du dann nach Hause kommst, dann kann es dir gut passieren, dass wenn du sagst, ich möchte nach Pakistan geben, dass Leute denken, du bist verrückt und sie müssen mal deinen Puls schützen. Number three, Drittens, few people ever get as far as you have already gone. Sehr wenige kommen so weit, wie ihr es eigentlich schon geschafft habt. You may feel you've not got very far. Du denkst vielleicht, ich bin noch nicht sehr weit gekommen. But few get this far. To give one month of your life to serving Christ in a foreign country where people speak another language. To even be exposed to a conference like this, many people would refuse to give a precious week in the middle of the summer to get involved in what's classified as a rather... Uh, Well, I won't say it. Missionary movement. Selbst nur eine Woche zu geben. Viele würden sich weigern, eine Woche im Sommer für eine Konferenz wie diese zu geben, wo man eben so viel mit Missionen bombardiert wird. Why has God in His providence brought you this far? Warum hat Gott in seiner Vorhersehung euch bis hierher gebracht? Surely it's not for you to turn back. Surely it's not for you just to return home and and and, and get a job. Picking weeds in the local golf course. Surely God has something special, something unusual, significant He wants to do in your life in regard to world mission. Number four, there are Endless open doors. Even for people with physical difficulties. Or what they feel are severe spiritual weaknesses. Missionary work is not a special task for super saints. It's a work that every believer must be involved in if he is to walk in obedience to Jesus Christ. It may be as a sender, it may be as a goer, it may be both. And remember, the ministry of intercessory prayer is more important than either one. 
You will hear of many open doors. In fact, this, month, this week you may be have your mind blown away by so many open doors and challenges. Surely God wants us to move into these open doors. Tremendous open door in, in India and Pakistan. In India and Pakistan gibt es eine weit offene Tür. Tremendous open door in the Sudan, in Egypt, and some of the Arab countries. In Sudan, in Egypt, and other Arab countries. Of course, here in Europe, the doors are off the hinges. Und hier in Europa gibt es gar keine Türen mehr, die sind schon aus dem Angeln gehoben. But there are even open doors to get the word of God into the Soviet country. Aber es gibt sogar offene Türen, das Wort Gottes in die Sowjetunion zu bringen. All of South America has now opened to us. All of Africa is opening her doors to the visit of the Dulas. Ganz Südamerika und auch Süd, uh, ganz Afrika hat die Tür für Dulas geöffnet. And yet we find ourselves at this time of OM's history hindered on every side by the lack of men and women willing to serve Christ even for one or two years. Number five, there are the resources. People say, oh well, you know, we don't have any money. Why do we measure everything by whether we have money or not? How many of you have seen God bring in at least some money in answer to prayer, even a few dollars or pounds? Almost everybody in the tent. And OM this past year has seen some of the most wonderful breakthroughs in finance we've seen in a decade. Some months we had almost no overdue bills. An unusual thing for a movement of this size, working at this speed with this many people, all whom spend money. If everybody in OM right now goes and buys a pack of gum, we're in trouble, I can assure you. God has taught us through times of difficulty. Once again, we're in one of those times. Overdue bills, waiting on the desk of our finance people. We believe even this week, even this week as we gather in prayer here, that God will open the heavens though no one hardly knows about this and we will see a miraculous supply of finance to fill those gas and diesel tanks and send you out to the front lines of spiritual warfare. I hope you'll go to the free literature table and pick up all that range of, of free, powerful pamphlets. You'll find one releasing finance through intercessory prayer. Read it and learn how to engage in that great ministry for God. My, bro my brothers and sisters, the God of Hudson Taylor, the God of George Mueller and William Carey is alive and well in 1985. Let's get in contact with him, the great financier of Christian work. God, number six, and this is a lifesaver for some of you. God can easily stop you. You start moving for God. You start moving by faith and obedience to the Word of God to go anywhere, whatever the cost, and take definite steps. God can stop you. He, he can use your church. He can use your parents. There are 20 different ways to stop a person. 
There seems to be only one way to get them started. They have to start themselves. They have to take a step of faith. They have to push a door. I can't start. I'd like to give some of you a kick, but that's not biblical. You've got to go by faith. You won't have all the answers in five minutes. Finding the will of God is not a, a little simple thing where you have a prayer meeting and a little blueprint drops out of heaven and you go, oh, who to marry, where to go, who to live, what kind of house, and what unreached people's group to go to after you're married. Es ist nicht so, dass ihr eine kleine Gebetsversammlung veranstaltet und dann fällt da ein Plan herab und dann steht drauf, wen ihr heiraten sollt, wo ihr hingehen sollt, welche Gruppe ihr erreichen sollt und so weiter. And with God there is no, no risk road. If you want a no risk road, let me give you a little clue. You're in the wrong planet. Und wenn ihr denkt, dass es keine Risiken gibt mit Gott, dann seid ihr auf dem falschen Planeten. And if we're going to evangelize the world, we need courageous people who are willing to take risks for God. Sportsmen take risks. Businessmen take risks. Mountain climbers are killed by the dozens taking risks. Joshua took risks when God commanded him to be courageous and to go forward. We need to take steps of faith. Knowing that God will go with us. And then lastly, number seven. As we go, others will follow. I went to Moody Bible Institute from college because I wanted to be in a, a tough city to witness for Jesus Christ. I was mildly interested in studies, but extremely interested in people. I got C's and B's in my studies. It's not so good. But Operation Mobilization was born at the same time. God is faithful. And as you take a step of faith, He will meet you. And as you begin to move, Others will follow. Out of Moody Bible Institute in those two or three years came 30, 40 people. And many of them are serving Christ in different parts of the world today. And then it spread to Wheaton College. And dozens went out from Wheaton. And then it jumped the Atlantic and hit Cambridge and Oxford and almost every university in Britain has sent people on Operation Mobilization. And there are now XOM or OM graduates serving Jesus Christ in almost every single mission in the world, almost every single denomination and almost every single nation in the entire world. And thousands back in their home countries making it possible for others to go. As you begin to go, you may get stopped by God and those who are following you, they will go. Wenn du anfängst hinauszugehen, kann es sein, dass Gott dich stoppt, aber solche, die dir nachfolgen, die werden hinausgehen und weiter marschieren. It's, it's like being a spiritual decoy. A what? A spiritual decoy. Decoy. Um, how do I explain that in German? I don't know. Uh, wie ein you attract people to something, but then you're nothing. You're only a decoy. Okay. You don't go. How to explain that? Du bist also einer, der andere anzieht, aber dann bist du auf einmal nichts mehr. I think it's time to finish. You think about these things. You go over those reasons. You examine your own heart. 
You talk with so many people here are available to counsel with you. People who have worked all over the world for Christ are here this week. I was amazed to meet Brother Kamal from Sudan, Brother Bertil here from Cyprus. People are just parachuting in from all over the world. And this is a divine opportunity to get some information. You can pray. And God's going to lead you. May not be this year. Some of you have commitments. Maybe next year. But some of you know you're a little bit slow, right? If you start at least moving this year, maybe five or ten years we may see you. We hope it won't be that long. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, you've given us a special privilege to be here.